Okay guys, what's up? Godsplitter here. Today I'm going to be bringing you a small video. It's going to be a quick tutorial on some basic dojo building. I'll show you some some of the basic things I used to build a really luscious and really thick environmental uh, scene for the dojo. I'll show you also some of the techniques I use for placement because I know the, the placement is very wonky. They haven't done a huge update in a long time on fixing some of those variables that really get out of your way or sometimes you'll flip a wall and it'll disappear halfway across the room. So I'll show you some of the techniques I use. We're going to build something real basic. As you can see, this is a little bit more advanced. This is later on. I'll throw out some more videos on how I went about doing something like this. But let's, uh, let's go ahead and get into it. So I chose the Entrati room right here because it's a like very large room. Now I know in most cases you guys will probably want to keep your, uh, your rooms. I'm going to close off most of these rooms and I'm going to teach you all how to build a small throne. Well, actually, this is a large room, so it might be a little bit larger thrown, but I'm going to show you how I go about doing that, how I place it. I'm going to teach y'all something about the, the three different axes you can rotate objects on, because a lot of people don't even know you can do that. So let's just go ahead and get into it. Okay, first of all, when, you, when you're going to decorate something, guys, go ahead and have an idea. Even if it's not drawn out, just have an idea. Uh, take pictures of concept art online, anything. Try to make it look as realistic and as organic as possible, unless that's not what you're going for but you want it to be your design. So don't just plain out copy something unless you're just practicing the building. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna get me a foundation going. I always go all the way over here. Next to atmospheres, you'll see where it says natural. Now there's some of these rocks you can place that are extensively large. In my cases, I'm gonna show you how to build a, a basic throne, like I said. So what I'm going to do is use this Lewis Yard cluster, which is large. Now. This is what I wanted to show you guys. If you hold left trigger, you can rotate it. But if you press R1, you change the axis to which they rotate on. And you got three. You got the red one, which flips it you know, upside down. You got the green one, which will turn it in a circle left to right or right to left, depending on which direction you turn it. And then if you want to rotate the object completely around, you use the blue axis. Now some of these change based on the direction in which you grab them. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to build me a small foundation, a floor that's going to lead up to it. And yes, a lot of objects you can push through the floor, not all of them, so don't quote me on that, but some of them you can. Now I'm looking at size here, because I don't know if you guys know, you can't build so close to certain some of these rooms, you'll see where it'll turn red. So sometimes I'll put me a marker as a stopping point that lets me know I have to stop right here. Okay, now the angle I'm going right now will bring this really high to the ceiling, so I'm going to change my angle just a little bit. Maybe pitch it about right there, push it a little bit further into the ground. Another thing, guys, if you're trying to make it symmetrical, use guidelines, for instance. Like, say you're trying to make this really straight and symmetrical, you can use these posts, these lines on the ground, anything you need to try to get you an idea of how to make this as straight as possible. Now what I'm doing right here is I'm pushing this rock into the other rock. And by the way, if you guys don't know, you can hover over an item and press triangle and it will instantly build the exact replica piece of what you got. Size, variation, and all. So I'm basically going to build a ramp right now up to where I want my actual throne to be. And remember this goes in play um, when it comes to the access. I'm building a platform relatively quick. You can typically build some of these rooms in no time, guys, once you understand how to operate the actual axis tool. Changing the pitch on these on these uh, objects make a big difference. Okay. So now let's just say that that's going to be our throne size, which by the way, if you look, this size of this rock is a little bit flatter than that one. So if you are using this Lewis Shard, the large one, I always recommend if you're building a platform like this, switch it to the side that's flattest. Now, how do we go about making this look a little bit more realistic and not so hollow? I also normally take the exact same ones, guys. I flip it. I rotate it like this to kind of hide some of that empty space. Also makes it look like a more pronounced walkway. And I'll do that all the way down. As you can see, it's, it's biting pretty well into the ground. Just make sure when you're rotating these, you get the general direction the same. And all I'm going to do is push this down into the ground. 
And if you have to, guys, you can take it, and when you get toward the end like this, I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. Let's see. I think that's as small as that one goes. We'll switch to a small one in a second. I'll show you. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to grab that one specifically, copy it, rotate it so it's got flat edges. And you can make a room in probably five to ten minutes if you're fast. I'm not going to tell, tell you that everybody's going to be able to do this in no time. But as you can see, I, I built a pretty quick foundation that didn't take long at all. That took no time. That, that was just a matter of minutes, guys. Now, in order, what I normally like to go about now is I try to make this place look as natural as possible. Uh, you don't exactly have to use this same technique I'm about to use. I just prefer it. I always, I spend a lot of time on the natural selection right here because this is how you're going to build that, that scene. Now we're going to use grass, and I don't know if you guys know this, press triangle, or not triangle, but up on the D-pad, and you can actually make the grass bigger. Now just remember, um, when your guy runs through this grass, this is going to be about chest height, as you can see right there. So if you don't want that, and you have the resources, by all means, make it a little bit uh, smaller, and it's just going to cost a little bit more resources. Now here's something else I wanted to tell you guys about. You can press triangle, and I don't know if you see on the right side, right there on the legend it says surface snapping what that means is if you have an object and you take it and put it on any surface it's going to snap to it now what I try to do when I'm placing grass I use surface snapping unless I'm around an object that normally turns red and I'm trying to maneuver it then I'll switch it to free placement so right now I'm going to duplicate that item go ahead and get my the grass on all sides and sometimes guys uh, when you get too close to obviously that your little decorating desk right here it'll turn red so be cognizant of that I'm gonna stop my grass right here and I'll show you why in a minute right now I'm just gonna build this foundation get the grass a little further I'm gonna be cutting out these rooms and I'll show you how I go about doing that also real quick let's get as much grass down as we can before I show you this next step and I'll even give you guys an example. I'll show you a room after this on what it looks like normally when it's done. Uh, the next room doesn't have grass in it though. And I'm just making this grass a little bit thicker here. Okay now, I know like I said you guys probably want to keep this room. I'm not going to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these Lewis shards, flip them upright. I'm going to use the rockier side to give it a rocky scene. I'm going to make them a little bit bigger. Uh, even give it some angle to it see that's red so that means I can't go that far and cut it off right there now you can make them bigger but just remember that also takes up space so if you need to do every other one and flip it over this way you can now you'll see this looks like there's not a lot going on here but by the end of it guys we'll have a bunch going on It'll look real natural, it'll look organic, and it'll look really good. Let's see, I'm going to change the direction of that. And we'll come back and add a little bit to it so it just don't look like it's a round room. Let's see, let's give it the backfall. Remember I set that, uh, that guideline right here earlier. Give me just a second. I'm going to rotate this just a little bit, tweak it. Always make sure you don't have to have this thing so so symmetrical as well, guys. A lot of people strive to make the left look as hard as they can like the right. And guess what? In real life, uh, mountainous scenes and everything, nothing symmetrical. So don't bite too hard on that. And don't spend too much time or waste too much time doing that. If that's what you're going for, by all means do that. But I'm not doing that here. Let's see. That gives it a little more value right there. See, I got this side leaning, so I'll even take a few and rotate them the opposite way. The only reason I'm doing this currently right now is I'm just trying to fill the void of the spaces so people don't know when they walk in this room that there are other rooms available. This is going to be the main center point of the scene. Okay, now, how do we take this and turn this into a throne? I'll show you. If you go back over to your selection, you go back to natural, Lower right hand corner as you pass the stalagmites, there's something called Lewis shards. Same ones I used before, but we're going to use singles. This time what we're going to do, we're going to make them as small as we can. Uh, at the starting point, I'm going to put one down 
just to get down here. This camera's a little wonky. If you think of games like Skyrim that have really, even for it to be a really old game, has really nice scenes, if you get some of the upgraded graphics mods, uh, you can make a really beautiful scene if you think on that variation of Skyrim. Now what I'm doing now is I'm putting guideposts on the way there to give it more of a, a feel to it. It's like you're walking towards something special. They spent some time on this. Okay. And I'm going to rotate these in just a little bit. And keep this menu up, guys, on the right. I'm telling you, after a while, sometimes you may get a little confused, but that menu really, really helps. Okay, so now I'm going to use these exact same ones, and you'll see the order in which I do it. You'll remember it kind of almost like a Stonehenge thing. I'm going to use these, but I'm going to gradually get them taller and bigger. And all I'm doing is placing these guys in. And th this is a real quick tutorial, guys. You don't have to do it exactly like this. This is completely subjective on whatever you like. But I'm trying to give you guys... Because I know the Dojo's Contest is coming up in February. I think the 13th is the final day that you can turn in, guys. So uh, I'm trying to help some of you guys get ready. If you want to enter it, that's cool. If you don't, that's fine. But this will be a little tutorial that might help you even push some things out y'all didn't know. The simple axis... Spinning on your axis makes a big deal to me. If you if you were placing this whole room using one axis, you would never get some of these variations. Okay, now move this a little bit over. You know what? Hold on. There we go. Now let's start bringing this to life. Let's actually build the throne. Once again, I'm going to do the axis. I'm going to put this down as low as I can. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. We're going to make it look like there's a few steps going up to it. Nothing special, just something else to give it a little extra, give it a little bit more detail, a little bit more lively feel to it. And just remember, the reason I'm <laughs> making these smaller guys, this is actually relatively large to your character. Keep that in mind. Always look back every once in a while at your character to see how large this is. Like, is this something they would actually sit on or is this like in trotty size? Okay. The only thing I might do, guys, I might move that back just a little bit further. Make this a little bit smaller. We'll move it to about right there. The next step I'm going to use, guys, is we're going to decorate this. We're going to make this like this is a little small area that they they come maybe pay homage to, or this is his personal throne. So what we're going to do is we're going to start decorating this. We're not going to leave it so bland, and I'll show you how I normally go about it. First of all, environmental effects play a huge role here, guys. Make sure you add environmental effects, and I'll show you some of the ones I would personally use. Uh, and it's one that doesn't get used a lot. If you go over here where you got your atmospherics, there's one toward, look for the H's that says heat distortion. Okay, you can see that gives a really cool visual. If you remember, it has kind of like that Aquaman pulse on it. I like using these for the middle. Now you can create a center point for something right there. You can even turn this from a throne into an altar. So let's say we're going about doing that. Let's use something for a small altar scene. All right, we'll put this as the center point. I'll put, uh, let's see, if we can't get these any smaller, then we're going to use something else. That goes back to the small Lewis shards I was telling you about. I'll show you in a minute. Now we got him there. Let's go ahead and go down to, let's go to atmospherics. Let's go to that heat distortion I was telling you about. That's going to give it a really cool visual. You're trying to make your dojo differentiate and stand out from others and a lot of people have a very similar theme we're trying to go for something a little different here but we want to bring it to life in order to bring it life you have to make this feel real so okay we got that there we got some grass here but it's very loose it's very thin there's nothing going on right now so let's go ahead and put some more vegetation in it let's go look back at our natural Okay, what do we got here? Okay, we got 
climbing vines. You can add plenty of these vines to make it look ancient and old like it's been overgrown. And yes, once again, you can turn around, you can push these into it. You can normally only do this, guys, before they're built. So I recommend doing it before. If you have to move them afterwards, so be it. But I'm trying to make this look as overgrown and vegetated as possible. All right, so let's just let's just go with that for right now. And this is just a quick demonstration, like I said. Now let's put some some good foliage on the ground. I'm gonna go back. Like I said, guys, natural is gonna be your best friend when you're trying to make these. Let's see what we got. All right, these plants right here look really good. But now size. If you're thinking something that's been sitting here for a while, something that's ancient and old and overgrown, we'll do something like that. It's the only, well, well, you can even rotate them different directions. They don't have to specifically be all facing upwards. Let's see, we're just gonna use this as an example. Now I've got those placed. Now, what else could happen over time period for extended periods of time? Let's see. Let's add... Okay, these are really cool because these are... There's not too many objects on the game that are actually animated, but the natural vallus fungus, which I think was added last year. Uh, you can let me, let me know in the comment section if that was actually correct or not. These things actually breathe, which I've always thought was really freaking cool. So we'll put a few of those out and about. Once again, I'm adding them in different sections. You don't have to add them directly beside each other. You can even add some on the wall, just as long as you use that axis. Give it something more to look at. You can change the size variation in them. That makes a huge difference. All right, now let's get a little crazy. Let's go back to natural. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add, there are some really, really large mushrooms in here, guys, that look really cool. Uh, this is a double cat. Let's see what size this is. Okay, that was perfect size. All right, we're going to add that. One on each side. We'll make this look a little symmetrical. But that was really simple done. That wasn't overcomplicated. It did not take too long. Um, we haven't changed any of the lighting, and we haven't beefed anything up with any elementals yet. So we're going to do that next. I'm just going to keep building to the foliage, and as soon as I get done with this, I'll show you some of the guys, or some of the things that I use personally. Alright, let's go back down through natural. Now these, this is the mature one. I want you to look for the one, the cluster, natural vallus mushroom cluster, and I'll show you why. It brings about a bunch of mushrooms. Let's see, matter of fact, we're going to put it right there so it looks like as soon as you come in, there's some thick vegetation. It's going to give it a really good surreal look. And I'm going to add one there. And I'm going to add one here. Now you're already creating a good scene. This is this is giving the viewer something to look at as soon as they come in. I always try to get the main center of attention, the main attraction basically. This is going to be the main attraction. But there are variables and different things to look at, other pieces of concept art. Like this, this is all this is environmental, but it plays a overall role in the development of this room. You want to make it feel how you want the reactors to react to it. So you want them to feel like this is a heavily vegetated old ancient altar or throne or whatnot, whatever you're building. And you gotta capture that some way. So let's go and let's add a little bit more ferns. Alright, let's add some ferns. You can size these up, and a lot of different fungi, if not, they grow in a lot of dead things, which is why I'm adding uh, mushrooms in here personally. You don't have to, it's just preference, and this is just for the tutorial. Let's see, we'll add this one right here. This is something they'll see when they come in. Let me move it up just a little bit. Notice how I didn't place one on the other side. We might even place something different on the other side, just to make it feel a little bit more organic and not so symmetrical like you would see in um in most dojos I've been to everyone's trying to get everything perfect and you really don't have to guys if you want something to feel natural everything doesn't have to be symmetrical 
Okay, something else I like to use are these right here. These looks like a giant root system. I'm gonna scale these bad boys up, lean some of these against the wall. I'm gonna press my triangle button right here to duplicate. Let's see, and they got a webbing to it. It's red right now. You can see this is what I'm talking about. Sometimes it gets a little wonky with the movement. Sometimes I will play something to move my camera and change the direction. All right, we're gonna place that one there. And as you can see, guys, we're not very far into this and we've already got a pretty cool scene going on. Uh, something else I've even considered doing is doing something like this and put a trading post right here. This could be your actual trading room and you can build a separate one for your contribution if you don't want them both together. But this probably took maybe five to 10 minutes to do, not long at all. And let's look at it as far as size perspective. So a size for a second, this is very epic. When you come in here, everything's already larger than you, so it feels like you're in this really cool ancient environment. Uh, you're gonna have pulsating things. I didn't even put no elementals down, and if you didn't currently right now, this would still be okay. You could pull this off. But I'm not using this just as a filler. This is not, this isn't a tutorial on just how to fill up space. This is just how to make a largely vegetated room, a throne room or an altar room and it's to show you some of the concepts I used to build them and to show you the time that you could build them in once you get used to the mechanics of it. Understand when you plant these things you can't get close to certain rooms but right now if you didn't know how to change that axis you can change the variable of this so good. I mean like you can make this work in any way you want. You can even have these hanging off the wall if you want. Change the direction of it. Some people might like it better like that. Let's, let's try that. Use, use that pitch, guys. Use that, those different axes. All right. Now it looks like those are growing out. Look at that. It just changed the whole thing. Now you can turn around if you wanted to, add smaller ones there in the corner. You can add more of these pulsating ones. You can try so many different ideas, guys, and it's, it's just limitless. But this is real quick, real simple, real easy, guys. And if you like the, the video, please let me know. Leave a like, leave a comment if there's anything you would change. Uh, that's, that's objective, that's okay too, but uh, that's pretty much it, guys. That's just a real quick video teaching y'all some of the mechanics I use when I'm building these rooms and to show you how quick you can do it. So if you're pressed for time, just learn how to manipulate the actual mechanics and you can build this room in five or 10 minutes. And all right, guys, please, like I said, like and subscribe and uh, I'll catch you guys on the flip side.